Next, we're going to look at a couple of application problems. Uh, this first one dealing with uh, velocity. Uh, now, velocity of any moving object is a vector because velocity has both a magnitude and a direction. Uh, you know, how fast is the object moving and in what direction is the object moving? Um, that's velocity and that's a vector. Um, now, the magnitude, in order to, to do a problem, we need to know, you know kind of one thing because you know, we've got an angle theta that will be given to us. We need to know that the magnitude. the magnitude of velocity is speed. Okay. Um, essentially, you always remember like this, the, um, the absolute value of velocity is speed. Um, you know, velocity has two pieces of information as far as what direction it's going and how fast it's going. Speed is just how fast you're going. Um, that's what we define magnitude to be for velocity is therefore just speed. So if I'm trying to find the component form of the velocity of this airplane as a vector, um, I'm going to start with this formula first. I need um, you know, the vector, we can, we'll just label it V for lack of a better variable. Um, the formula we had a few slides ago, it's the magnitude of the vector times cosine theta sine theta. Well, so the reason why I talked about this is we have to know that um, the magnitude is just speed, which in this problem is that. Okay, um, So we've got the vector is 530 times cosine theta sine theta. Now you notice I've left the thetas out because we have to think about the theta, actually. Um, the problem tells us that the plane is flying on a directional bearing of 335 degrees. So let's discuss that. The directional bearings, um, unless they're given specific directions like north, south, east, and west, we're going to always measure those directional bearings off of north, off of north, going in a clockwise direction. Okay, so 335 degrees starting north is going to be a little bit shy of a full circle, 360 degrees. So this is what they told us, 335 degrees. Now over here, the theta that we need in our problem is not 335 degrees because uh, in our problem over here, theta is always measured off of the positive x-axis. Okay, if I'm going to do cosine of something or sine of something in the calculator, it's always got to be measured from the positive x-axis. Can't do it any other way. Now, so the first thing I'm going to find is possibly like, what's this difference? How short is this 335 of the full 360 circle? Okay, and we'd find that it's 25 degrees short. Well, then we also have this full quadrant, which is 90 degrees. Put those together, and this angle that we want is 115 degrees. Different than this, okay? But this was used to get the 115 degrees. Okay, so now we're ready to actually compute this. Um, and the 530 will be distributed in here. So I want 530 times the cosine of 115. It's negative 223, we'll just say 0 0.0. Actually, let's round that correctly. Negative 224, de and it's not degrees. Let's try one last time. And we want 530 sine of 115. If we round that, it'd be 480.3. That's the component form of the vector. And let's think about the picture. Does it make sense in the picture? It certainly does. We went left 224, up 480.3.
Next example says that we have an airplane flying on a compass heading, which is a, its directional bearing of 340 degrees at 325 miles per hour. And now more kind of realistic from the last example, we have wind that's blowing uh, with the directional bearing of 320 degrees at 40 miles per hour. Uh, in the end, we're going to attempt to determine how does the wind affect the actual speed and direction of the airplane. Okay, so maybe first I'll just kind of draw a, kind of a quick sketch of this. Okay, so we've got our airplane, let's use red for that, our airplane's going 340 degrees at 325 miles per hour. So there's our airplane. Uh, 340 degrees and of course I'm measuring 340 from the y-axis here, 340 degrees. So that's like 20 degrees shy of a full circle here. Uh, now we have a wind blowing at 320 degrees, 40 miles per hour. Okay, so we've got this wind, 300 or 320 degrees, which is 40 degrees shy of the full circle. So obviously that wind is going to kind of push the plane a little more um, to the west than it's actually um, going at and it's probably going to impact its speed too so so let's kind of do all that now to, to figure that out what we have to do first is find the component form of the velocity of the airplane we're also going to need the component form of the wind so we're going to have to find two vectors we're going to have to find a vector for the airplane a vector for the wind okay so let's do the airplane first for the airplane I'm just going to call it a, it is its magnitude, 325, times the cosine of its angle, the sine of its angle. Uh, now it's angle, we have to figure that out. Now, we had said already that, I'm going to do a lot of this just verbally, this 340 degrees was 20 degrees shy of the full circle. So if this little angle right here is 20, plus we've got the whole first quadrant to go through, so 90 plus that little 20 would make this 110 degrees. Okay, so the airplane then in component form, I'm going to have 325 cosine of 110, so negative 111, we'll just say 0.2, I have 325 sine of 110, 305.4. So there's our airplane's vector. Okay, now let's do the same thing for the wind. So I need its magnitude, which is 40, times the cosine of an angle, sine of an angle. So again, we'll do this just verbally here. This 320 degrees was 40 shy of the full circle, plus we've got this 90 degree first quadrant, so 90 plus 40 is 130 degrees. So we have then 40 cosine 130 and 40 sine 130. So the wind's vector is negative 25.7 comma 30.6. Okay, so that's kind of part A done. Actually, it's a little more than part A. Part A was only asking for the airplane, which is this. But to do part B, we're going to need the wind also. So now part B, find the actual ground speed and direction of the plane. Um, well, the actual ground speed and direction of the plane is the resultant vector or comes from the resultant vector A plus W. I'm going to add these together. So I have negative 111.2 plus negative 25.7, negative 136.9, and then we have 305.4 plus 30.6, 336. Okay, so you know this is 
the component form of the plane the plane's trying to fly at, right? Uh, this is the wind, and this is the resultant of the wind acting on the plane. Um, you know, it would be a vector that plots, you know, if I were to plot it out, it plots um, kind of right in between them. Maybe like that. You know, it's further left than the plane's, uh, and it's further north, you know, which makes sense because the wind is pushing it west and north. That's the direction of the wind right there, that it should push the plane kind of up into the, the northwest a little bit further. Um, so what we want to do is find the speed and direction of this vector right here. Um, the speed of this vector, the ground speed, is simply its magnitude. So I want the negative 136.9 squared plus 336 squared under a square root, so it's just my Pythagorean's theorem computation. So that would be, oops, look like that, and the square root of that. So the speed is 362.8 miles per hour. You know, so the, the wind has definitely sped that up a little bit. Okay, it's like a tailwind, so it's, it's pushing it. And now we also want the direction, angle theta. It's tan inverse of the y value over the x. So let's see, tan inverse. This comes out to be negative 67.8 degrees. Okay, so now it kind of gets a little bit tricky. Uh, that negative 67.8 degrees uh, is this angle right there kind of directly in line with the a plus w vector. So what I'm going to do is add, uh, let's see if we can get right here and see what we're doing. I'm going to take that negative 67.8 and I'm going to add 180. Okay, so this right here, it's going to go there. That's 112.1 or 112.2 degrees. So I'll say I plus 180. Now 112.2 degrees, uh, that's not the compass heading, that's not the directional bearing of the plane. 112.2 uh, degrees, if I take 90 away from that, that 22.2 degrees, so what we are right here, right there, that's 22.2 degrees shy of an entire circle. Okay, so let's do 360 degrees minus 22.2, and so the direction of the plane is 337.8 degrees. Okay, so that's that's the actual compass heading to this line, starting here, going all the way around and ending there.